It's so wonderful to see everyone's smiling faces and God's grace, his peace, his blessings be on you all. Yeah. We are deeply honored to stand here before you this day. My name is Kevin, Kevin Green, and my lovely bride, Monique. <laughs> We have been appointed, tasked by Pastor Neas, by the Holy Spirit, to oversee the prayer ministry here at the Spirit Church. And I tell you, it is a deep honor, and I want to just give a shout out of recognition to all those who are part of the prayer ministry, all the prayer partners. We love you. We thank you. Thank you for your diligence. Thank you for all that you do, because the ministry could not run without you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Pastor Neas, Pastor Tracy, my wife and I are extremely humbled. We're humbled that you've given us the opportunity that you've asked us to stand before the congregation to feed them this morning. So we, we thank you sincerely, and we know that you're watching, so we just want to say hi to you. name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we've been on this series now here at the Spirit Church. We've been on this series for a while, and it's called Grace for Your Race. And we're going to stay on this series until the Lord tells Pastor to move on to something else, because there is a word that he wants each of us to receive during this time period. So this morning, we have a subtopic to grace for your race. And the subtopic is as one. That's as, A-S, one, O-N-E. So grace for your race as one. As you can see, we're a married couple. And while it may sound like this is a message for those who are married, no. It's a message for everyone. From the youngest child to those who are unmarried to those who have been married for many, many years. So please listen. Please listen. So, uh, our foundation scripture today, and it's uh, on the screen, I hope, 2 Peter 3.18. Because the question is, how do we grow in grace, and what is grace? But in 2 Peter, we're told to grow in grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So, what is grace, Brother Kevin? Grace. Grace is God's unmerited favor. It's his unmerited favor. It's his gift. It's free gift for all of us. And I think there's probably a way that we can simplify that just a little bit more. So when I think about grace, I think about that, the fact that God loves us so much <laughs> that he just simply wants to bestow extreme blessings on us. And that's what grace is really about. And he's given us the grace for every race that we're in. There's a race where your job is concerned. There's a race to raise your children. There's a race for you to get through this life. And because Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly, he's given us the grace to run that race. So just think about grace as God's extreme favor on your life because he loves you. You know, so we ask this question, okay, so where, where does this grace come from? Where does this grace start? And to answer that question, we have to go all the way back to the beginning, all the way back to Genesis. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, says God created. God created the heavens and the earth. And if we go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God said, let us make man in our image. Let us make him an exact duplicate of kind. Let us put our DNA in man. 
Let us give him every attribute that we have. He said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let's give man all of our characteristics. Let's give him the love, the peace, the joy, the patience. Let's give him the understanding and the wisdom that we have. Let's give man the ability to create. So let man or mankind have dominion. Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And let me have the next verse. Let me have the next verse. Genesis and praise God. Genesis 1, 20, no, yeah. verse 27. God said, let us have man in verse 126, and then in 127, God created man in his own image. He created man in the image of God, created he them. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. God transferred a blessing. He spoke a blessing unto mankind. And God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So this is the beginning. God created us. God blessed us. God transferred his power, his attributes, into mankind. So then what happened? Well, uh, he was just doing okay in the garden. Remember, he was, he was getting the download directly from God. He was naming the animals, and he was going about doing his job. But as God saw him doing the job, he said, I must give man a suitable helper, right? So what he did <laughs> was he took a rib from man, and then he closed him up with flesh, and he said, hmm, this will be Adam's helper. Wait, 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 let me, let me stop you now, wait. Now, now in Genesis uh, 1, if I recall, and I saw the word, okay. I read the word, it's right. right here in front okay. of me. Okay. Now, it said that God created man and woman. He created male and female. He created them back then. Okay, well, well, let me explain that to you because that's why he gave you a helper. So, <laughs> so, when God created man or mankind, he created mankind in his image. God is a spirit. So he created the spirit, right? So, uh, he then gave Adam his earth suit. You know, he went to the ground and, you know, formed this kind of handsome hump. And he put him, <laughs> he put him in the garden and, and he was doing his thing. Then, later on, the Lord said, I'll take the rib and I'll give woman a, an earth suit. Right? Okay. So that's how that came about. So remember, we're spirit first. This is just a vessel. This is just an earth suit. We are created in the image of God. We have his DNA, his spirit, and we are little gods. So I see. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me have the next verse of Genesis, please. Let me have Genesis uh, 1 and 28, please. I'm sorry. Let me have Genesis 2, chapter Chapter 2 and verse 20. And I don't know, I need to see if it's up here. Thank you. So, Adam, man. Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. He gave him a job, ladies. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God for a job. Okay, so... <laughs> Uh, but, but for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. He didn't have a help meet. Let me have the next verse. And so, the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And as he slept, he took out one of his ribs. And he closed up the flesh in his place. 
And then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he, he made into a woman, and he brought him to the man. Her. Brought her. Thank you. To the man. <laughs> yes, Adam and Eve. Thank you. <laughs> Help me, right? Okay. <laughs> And so Adam said, well, well, this is now bone of my bones and, and flesh of my flesh. I'm going to call her woman because she was taken out of man. So therefore, therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one, one flesh. So, so what does one flesh look like? How, how, do we, how do we run our race and how do we have this grace for our race as one? Well, God gave us an example. And I have a military background, an Air Force background. So God let me see it this way. He said, okay, you have a commercial airliner. Any one of the airliners you might see out at Lambert Field. And in a commercial airliner, you have a pilot and a co-pilot, and they sit side by side. Each of them have duplicate controls, and the airliner itself is so complex that it can actually fly itself. It takes two of them to get it off the ground, two to land, but it can fly itself. Now, in the complexities of life, the complexities even with marriage, God says, think about a fighter plane. In a fighter plane, you don't have side-by-side -side seating. You have tandem seating, one in front of the other. Each of the pilots has a very specific function. And in a fighter plane, usually the one who's sitting in the back has the controls of the plane. This one flies the plane. This one gets the plane from point A to point B. The one in front is responsible <laughs> for the navigation, ensuring that the plane knows where it's supposed to go. The one in front is also responsible for the radar, seeing where the enemy is and avoiding the enemy. The one in front is responsible for ensuring that the plane will get to its destination, that the enemy is avoided, and that the bombs will be dropped at the appropriate point. Now, in a tandem seat aircraft, there are roles. And with these roles, they're interchangeable because both pilots are trained. Both pilots are trained to fly that plane. <laughs> but anyone who knows anything about an advanced fighter knows that it takes two. That plane will never get off the ground and complete its mission unless these pilots are in tandem working as one. <laughs> So now you know that you're in tandem, working as one. The big question is, how do you get there, right? We're seated in the plane, but how did we individually get there? Kevin? Well, we, we have some choices. We have some choices, and um, I'm going to give you two choices. How do you get there? Well, you can do it yourself. You can do it yourself, and uh, there's a scripture that says that there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof leads to destruction. Proverbs 14, too. And I will say that um, my lovely wife and I, this is not our first marriage. It's not the first lap around that mountain, and we're not going around again. <laughs> <laughs> So we took choice number one, uh, let's, let's do it yourself, and we discovered the hard way that um, that way that seems so right to a man, it does sincerely lead to destruction. There's a second way, and the second way is to do it God's way. And there's a scripture that says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not into your understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. And you know, that's more than just words. That, that's even more than a notion to trust someone that 
depending on where you are in your relationship with him, maybe you don't hear his voice or maybe you don't know him quite that well. But again, we chose number one. And what did that look like for us? Okay, I, I, you know, for the sake of transparency, for, for those of you who know me, uh, I like to say I was raised in the way. I was raised being saved as a child, being baptized, uh, watching, you know, my household tithe, you know. So there were some things I was doing in life that I thought I was doing right. But I, like the young people today, had gotten out there and been influenced by the culture, okay? Is there anyone like me out there, or am I alone? Okay, <laughs> all right, okay. So, you know, uh, our parents uh, worked hard, and uh, we were able to go to some of the finest institutions in the country. So then you're surrounded by Wall Street, and you're surrounded by the, the glamorous things in life. And, and you're saying, wow, so I just, I just need to marry uh, someone who can make the six digits as well. See, I'm going to date myself because I'm going to say it was even in the Wall Street Journal. They used to call us dinks, dual incomes, no children, no kids, right? <laughs> so, you know, you're flying all over the world. You're having vacations everywhere. And you think you have the know-how to pick a mate not based on God's wisdom. And I was someone that didn't listen. I, I did not listen. Let's just get real. I thought I knew it all. You know, I had gone to the finest institutions. I had the finest breathing, you know. Uh, I was poised to do, quote, well in life. But my mother knew because she was someone that believed in the Lord and had seen him get her through. So uh, it took uh, me coming down on my knees. And just saying, help me, Lord. Okay? And I had, to I had followed the pattern of my mother. I started listening to the gospel music, and I went back to my roots. And, and I, I had to get back there. So for those who have strayed away, let me tell you, you can go back. He, he's right there. He's never left you, but you have to activate him, and, and he'll work with you. So mine wasn't a pretty picture, but when I called on the Lord, he came. <laughs> now, I thank God now for every experience that I've had because I can say that truly by what has happened to me, perhaps it can help someone else. So I, I met my wife really when we were 18 years old. And um, we were both together at the University of Notre Dame. And I bring it up because they are three and one right now. And they only lost by one point to Georgia. <laughs> But we met. We met at Notre Dame. We, we knew each other. And when I was introduced to her, it was a friend, another friend from New Orleans that introduced me to her. And as we walked away from her, I said, wow, who is that? And my friend, very well-meaning, said, oh, that's Monique. You want to stay away from her. She's too much for you. And how do you know, it, it was just like the 12 spies that were sent out to spy the land. Ten of them came back with a bad report. And unfortunately, I didn't have the ones with the good report to tell me, take a look again, because there's a reason that you're attracted to her. And it was more than just a physical attraction, something I really can't explain, because I'd never felt that way about any young lady. So I left college. I became an Air Force officer. And I said, well, I've got it like that now. I can do things my way. <laughs> well, went to Notre Dame, I'm an Air Force officer, do what I want to do, make my own decisions. Now, I had some parents who were praying parents, and they were involved with the denomination, which is a great denomination. I just didn't understand what they saw, even though they did raise me, my siblings, and the way in which we should go. So I still said, well, let me go ahead and buck tradition. I can make these decisions, because remember, I, I went to Notre Dame, I'm an Air Force officer, I can do this. <laughs> And I made a decision which, uh, unfortunately, you know, it takes many years to get out of that decision. But I will say, through the grace of God, Amen. through the grace of God, I like my wife's example. I still see her fingerprints here on the stage, but I'm not going to get on my <laughs> knees right now because that's really what I had to do. I had to humble myself, and as I was brought to the end of me, yeah. and it was me being brought to the end of me, yeah. 
I have to submit myself to my father to say, Lord, I am sorry. Sorry for the decisions that I have made. And Lord, please forgive me. And I submit myself to you to help me get out of this situation and walk on the path that I know you've prepared for me. So what, what does that walk look like? Let me tell you, I, I felt that the Lord came at me with a piece of earth moving equipment because he was saying, I'm going to uproot all these trees <laughs> that I haven't planted. And, and it was a painful process, uh, getting rid of the notions that you had, uh, just moving forward. So step one for me was over 20 years ago, I started in Bible study. And I began to learn who I was in Christ. And I continued, and I continued. And it was Bible study. It was independent study. It was reading. It was making sure I was there on Sunday to hear the word. But it was read my word daily. Pray daily. This is, you have to work at it. It's not an osmosis kind of thing. Because God is a co-laborer with you. He's not just going to drop that blessing in your lap without you doing part of that work because faith without works is what? It's dead. Yes. So, so you, can, you can sit back and you know what? You can't just think it. You have to speak it because as Kevin said earlier, what did God say? God said, let there be light, right? Let there be, let there be, let there be. You have to speak that because you are a walking, talking, speaking, creative spirit. So you've got to get that word in the atmosphere. And I'm going to tell you, once you put it out there, that one enemy is coming after you. Okay? <laughs> but God is going to be there to strengthen you. Just hold on because you'll get where you're going. Now, how does this look like? How do we run this race as one? Well, the Lord starts working with us as one, yeah. as one individual. And in my case, as I said, I have to submit myself to God. I have to come to the end of me and say, Lord, I can't do this. I've made mistakes. Lord, I, I don't even want to be married. I can't stand the idea of marriage. It didn't work. I just don't want to do it anymore. Well, that, that anger lasted for about a day. <laughs> <laughs> And again, I'm going through a humbling process because then I got on my knees and said, Lord, okay, it hasn't worked out. It's not your fault. I made decisions. You didn't call me to do this. Lord, I did this on my own. I was full of myself. Lord, okay, all right. You know what? I love the idea of marriage. Father, for you created it. You created this institution. It's supposed to work. It's supposed to be relatively easy too. So Lord, I, I, I want you to choose my wife. No, 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 no. Lord, choose my wife mate. Choose my mate. Choose the one like you gave Eve to Adam. Choose my mate, Lord, the one who will, who will make me feel that truly I'm on the right path, who will support me, Father, what you've called me to do. And I humbled myself in the process, and reading God's word, the Lord began to speak to me. One of the first things the Lord told me to do was, you're putting football before me. You're putting football before me. That becomes an idol, my son. That's an idol in your life. So what I want you to do is give up watching football. Now, I had a football club, a bunch of friends that would meet at <laughs> B-dubs, Buffalo Wild Wings, and we would watch football all Saturday afternoon, all Saturday night. And the way college football is played, it's Thursday, it's Friday, it's Saturday, all day. And I would be up to 1, 2 o'clock in the morning watching games on the West Coast, and then getting up and going to church. All red-eyed, but I was still going to church, praise the Lord. So the Lord told me to give up my football. That was hard. <laughs> that was very, very hard. But, but I gave it up. And the Lord said, well, you know what? That's still not good enough because you're used to staying up late at night, but I want you to seek me early in the morning. So then the Lord had me going to bed 9 o'clock at night. He said, go to bed early. As a matter of fact, I want you in bed by 9 o'clock, and I want your lights off by 9.15. That was hard. My parents taught me 
by their actions to stay up till 2 o'clock in the morning and then to get up at 6.30 the next morning and run out to school or run out to work. So I had years of habit that I had to break. But the Lord knew he didn't plant that in me, so he had to uproot that from my life. So I wound up going to bed 9 o'clock at night, struggle to get there. Yes, it was a struggle initially. But then the Lord would have me get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Why 4? Because he said, seek me early. Seek me early. I'm teaching you discipline, my son. I'm teaching you how to do things my way. You asked me. You asked me to help you. Now I'm teaching you to do it my way. Over some time, the Lord began to deal with me saying, okay, I want you to tell me what you think you want in this mate that you've asked me to give you. And so I started writing my list because the Bible says that we are to write the vision down and make it plain. Amen. So I wrote down everything I thought I wanted in my wife. And on a regular eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, I think I had about 12 items. The Lord began to reveal to me, I know the plans that I have for you. I know how I've created you. You are my workmanship. You are a royal priesthood. You're a chosen generation. You, my son, are royalty. And I know you better than you know yourself. Not only do I know what you want, my son, but I know what you need. I know the desires of your heart because I've placed them in there. And the only way I knew what the Lord was saying was because he would have me arise early and pray. I was praying, and then I was reading his word. This was every single day. I would go to, night, go to bed at night reading his word because I was hungering and thirsting after the righteousness which only God and Jesus could provide for me. And I wanted it done God's way. I was completely sold out at that point because I'd reached rock bottom. I couldn't go any lower. So in a sense, why not try it this other way? So as God began talking to me about my mate, he said, my son, you, you like to eat, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I do like to eat, Father. You think you're a pretty good cook, aren't you? Well, yeah, I do okay, I do okay. <laughs> um, my son, I've already chosen a mate for you since before the foundation of the world, since, you were, since before you were even placed in your mother's womb, because I see the end from the beginning. I am the Alpha and the Omega, my son. I am your creator. And so I'm going to tell you some of what I put in you. He said, my son, you need a mate that likes to cook. You need a mate that likes to cook what you like to eat. You don't even really understand what you like to eat, my son. You think you hate asparagus. Well, wait. Wait until your mate makes asparagus. <laughs> you think you can't eat Brussels sprouts. Well, wait until your mate makes the Brussels sprouts. And broccoli and cauliflower. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> And she's right, you know, I, I, you know, thank God for a helper. I mean, uh, whew, yeah, because I wouldn't eat that stuff. There's no way. Anyway, I, I grew up on lettuce and tomato. That was a salad. And, uh, you know, you throw a little mayo on that, and you know, it's a little old school, but that's what, that's what I grew up on, you know, some green peas out of a can. And not that there's anything wrong with that, but the Lord said, my son, don't, don't box me in. Don't, don't, don't limit me, because, my son, there are no limits to what I can do in your life. And by the way, as I reveal myself to you and I show you who I am, my son, I am going to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above anything you could ever imagine or think, my son. You don't yet understand the power that I have placed within you and how this power works, my son. And that which I have said I shall surely bring to pass. So the Lord took my list of 12 items, and over time it wound up being back and front on that piece of paper. The Lord said, my son, the maid I've chosen for you has a daughter. And I said, well, Lord, I think on my list here, I said, I don't want any more children. I have two children. I don't need any more children. That's, uh -uh, that's all passe. I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord said, my son, do you know who I am? Do you know how I've created you? My son, this is a desire in your heart that you didn't even know you had. I promise to give you your desires, my son, and only I truly know what your desires are. Well, my daughter Meredith, who is uh, in college in New York, my daughter Meredith is my heart. She's 20 years old. She is absolutely the apple of dad's eye. 
and I realized even when I met this child for the very first time, didn't know really who she was, had never met her, Meredith came running to the car to see who I was. Meredith sat under me. Meredith couldn't walk away from me. I sat down. Meredith turned on the TV and started watching cartoons. And I sat there laughing at cartoons with Meredith. And then all of a sudden, I became a big Nickelodeon fan. <laughs> God knew my desires. He completely knew my desires. So, uh, of course, he knew mine also. Okay? Um, and again, another piece of my background, my father died at 49. So I was broken, right? Because the father is the foundation of the family. Hear me, men. The father is the foundation of the family, particularly if you have a daughter. So I was 17 years old, and he died. And you know what? I, was, I had also developed a root of bitterness. How could he die, right? How could he die on me? So I was trying, I was making decisions that were, I'm going to do everything opposite to what my dad would do, all right? So the Lord, you know, had to continue to work with me. And even my mother had to say things like, don't be angry, right? Don't be angry. God is with you because she was a fantastic example. So after I went through the previous marriage, my mother was, I didn't realize how I grew up. Every room in the house had scriptures. It was in my eye gate, everywhere. And I could hear, I could hear her talking to me, baby, just keep walking, just keep your hand in the Lord's hand. He'll figure it out. The reason I say this is, you young women, there's an elder somewhere in your life, an elder woman, and she knows how to navigate that road. Listen now, don't wait like I did. You know, God is restoring everything, but there's a portion there are consequences, and you can't go back. So young women, listen to those elders with godly wisdom and move forward. So the desire of my heart was simply a godly man, right? So I said, okay, that's all I want. Lord, you do it your way. I don't care about anything else. I just want a godly man. I want a, a man after your heart because you know I love you, okay? So then he shows up on the scene. And we knew each other from, from college, and uh, we just became friends. And I'll let you take this for a little while. <laughs> Go ahead. We became friends. Oh, we're out of time. Okay. Began to talk to us and say that you, 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 have, a, you have a courtship. You have a courtship. This, this woman that you see before you is your mate. And I said, okay, Lord, uh, seriously? And the Lord said, yes, yeah, seriously. No way. Way. This is your mate, my son. This is whom I've chosen for you. And he had us courting. And for three years, we began to develop our friendship. Because when you're courting, he didn't want us dating. He just said, you court. You get to know the person because this is who you're going to marry. You get to know her likes and her dislikes. You get to see how she works because you're now courting. Okay. So the, the courtship went on. And then the Lord said, this is your mate. And I went, really? Okay, okay, but I'm going to trust you this time. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go with the flow. Okay. <laughs> so we, we eventually got married. And uh, for the sake of time, we're going to have to run through this pretty quickly. So we got married. And now we're in the tandem um, airplane. And there's a little turbulence, right? <laughs> a little turbulence because we're old people getting married. We're not 20, right? <laughs> We're, look, look, we're, we're developed in, her, in, our, in our habits, right? I fold the towels, he unfolds the towels. I, you know, I squeeze the toothpaste, he meticulously rolls the tube up, right? I put my socks on the floor. She goes to pick them up, perfectly good socks. I want to wear those tomorrow morning. <laughs> but you know what? You put them at the foot of the bed and you're asleep. You're not going to get up and put them on. So <laughs> they're going in the laundry. And I look at her and I go, well, honey, how is it that when I go in your closet, you, know, you go in my closet, everything is color coordinated in there. You see all my slacks are together. You see all my suits are together. I got all my ties here. The red one's right here. The green one's over here, honey. Everything is color coordinated. How come your closet doesn't look like that? <laughs> so, so we have those challenges, but we just want to share with you three ways that God gives us the, the grace to run this race as one. 
And the first one is through prayer, and we pray daily. We pray individually, we read a chapter every day, we come together and we pray, and we pray with understanding, and we pray in the Spirit. Yes. And we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. And he leads us and he guides us because he's the one that has brought this together. So we yield ourselves, we delight ourselves in the Lord, knowing that he gives us the desires of our hearts, that whatever we need, whatever we ask, he is our provider, he's our ever-present help. So remember, as Brother Kevin started out, we have God's DNA, right? Do y'all have God's DNA? All right. So guess what's in there? It's called the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And when you're doing this race as one, you pull on Galatians 5, 22, and 23. Which you have to pull on God's love. You have to have his love because he's already given it to you. And the Holy Spirit will help you develop that. You have to pull on the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the gentleness, the goodness. You have to pull on the temperance that God gives you so that you can run this race together as one. And what does this look like for us now? Again, going back to the example of the tandem fighter plane. We stand in tandem now, but we fly this plane together. And we always accomplish the mission because the orders come from on high. Yes, thank you, but we're both together and each of us has a role and we know that this plane is not gonna move unless each of us is doing our parts. So as the plane goes to the right, we both shift to the right. As it goes to the left, we both shift to the left. We'll go forward. We'll go backwards because we're sitting in the cockpit together. Amen. So if you want to get in that tandem plane, you have to take that step that we took. And the first step... It's just accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you may say, well, you know, I've been told that before. Uh, I've, I've sat through services before. You know, I, I don't understand what this Jesus thing is all about. I, and a matter of fact, I don't even think I need Jesus. I'm doing well on my own. Well, well guess what? I, I've been there. I've absolutely been there. Even raised in the church, still didn't understand what that meant. So I would ask you right now, if God is tugging at your heart, you know, don't, don't wait until tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen come tomorrow, but I guarantee you that if you make the decision today, all of your tomorrows will be made known to you. So if Jesus and accepting Jesus is something that you'd like to do, why don't you just raise your hand where you are. Raise your hand and just wave it really, really high so that we can see you. And all it takes is just a simple, just a simple decision. Yes, ma'am, I see your hand. Thank you. Yes, sir, I see your hand back there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, and I see your hand. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It, again, it's just a simple something, Lord, I, I just want to do. I'm tired of doing it on my own, and I want to do it your way. Or, Lord, I'm thinking, you know, maybe I do want to be married one day, but I, I want you to choose my mate for me. Again, if that's you, if you want to make that decision right now, just wave your hand on high. Wave your hand on high so that we can see it. Thank you. Thank you. I have a second invitation. Perhaps you were raised in the church. Perhaps you are saved even at this point, but maybe you just kind of turned around and just decided, well, I'm going to do it my way. I have some wild oats to sow. If that's you, I want you to know right now that God loves you and God is always and forever tugging at you. He wants you back. There's no condemnation. God just wants you back into the fold. And if you have turned around for whatever reason, maybe you were hurt. Maybe someone in the church offended you in some way or another. Maybe things happened in life. You know, maybe even the death of a loved one and you say, well, God, you know, I'm angry. Well, you know what? If that's you, God is tugging at your heart right now, and he's asking you to come on back in. He loves you with an everlasting love. If you'd like to rededicate your life and just say, Lord, I'm yours, here I am, and I surrender, just raise your hand right now. Raise your hand that we might see you. Praise God, I see that hand, I see that hand, I see that hand, I see that hand. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Anyone else? Anyone else, you say, I'm tired of doing things my way, and Lord, I'm, I'm coming back to you because I love you, Lord, and I know that you love me, and never will you ever forsake me. If that's you, just go ahead and raise your hand right now, right now. Oh, thank, you. thank you. I see those three hands. Thank you. Those four hands. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. Praise God. Thank God. Thank God for you. And the last, the last invitation, when we're sitting together in this fighter plane and we're sitting tandem, we can flip every switch we want to, but the plane doesn't start unless it's got fuel in it, unless power is there to that plane. And the power that runs this plane is the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to refer to him as the Holy Spirit because every now and then some people, you know, maybe you had an experience where you went to a church and you saw the movement of the Holy Ghost and you saw something that was just so strange and unusual that you thought, I, I don't want any part of that. No, it's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, and he's a gentleman. And what is the Holy Spirit? He is our helper. He is our power source. He is the evidence that God truly is real in our personal lives. So if you thought, well, I, I might want to give this Holy Spirit a chance because I can't do this on my own and I need some help and I'm saved already, but things still aren't working out right for me. I want that power, the power and the ability that God has given me. If that's you, let me see by a show of your hand right now. Just, just wave your hand and say, I want the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And I see that hand. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I see that hand. Thank you. I see those hands. Thank you very much. I see that hand. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Praise God. We praise God for all of you. We praise God for all of you. Now, if you answered any aspect of that invitation, if you were one who said, Father, I want to do it, your way and I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and as my Savior. I want you just to repeat after me. Repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I've done things my own way. And Father, I'm turning now from that way. I want all that you have for me, Lord. And so, Lord, I surrender myself to you and I ask Jesus to come into my heart. Fill me now, Lord. I believe that Jesus is your son. And that he died and you raised him from the dead. I believe that he's seated at your right hand and he's my savior. And I thank you, Lord, for I confess now with my mouth and I believe this in my heart. Thank you that I am saved. Thank you that I am saved. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Those of you who answered that second invitation said, well, you know what? I, I've already been saved, and, and maybe I've just turned around and I've done things my way. But now I'm coming back to you, Lord, because I know your love for me is great. Would you just repeat after me, please? Father, Father you love me. With an, everlasting love. with an everlasting love. And Father, you welcome me with open arms. Lord, I'm sorry I did things my way. But I thank you that you give me the opportunity to do it your way. Thank you that you welcome me, Father. Thank you that, you welcome me. that your arms of grace surround me. That your arms of grace surround me. Thank you, Father, that you've never left nor have you ever forsaken me. Nor have you ever forsaken me. I thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Those of you who answer the third invitation, who'd like to receive the power source, the Holy Spirit, would you repeat after me? Father, I thank you now. Father, I thank you now. For it is a gift from you. For it is a gift from you. And you give it freely to all who ask. Father, I ask you now to fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me the evidence, Father, that the Holy Spirit is within me. Give me evidence of speaking with other tongues. Father, I thank you that I receive it now. Father, I thank you that I receive it now. And as I'm properly instructed, and as I'm properly instructed that power source will be manifest in me. Thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Saints, I want to thank all of you who answered the invitation. We receive you as the body of Christ. We receive you with a hero's welcome yeah. because we know yeah. it takes courage to do what you've done. We praise God for you. We want to thank you. Those who've answered the invitation at the end of our service, we'll have prayer partners lining up here in the front. Those of you who want to receive the Holy Spirit, please come down. Talk to one of our prayer partners because that gift will be administered to you. Those of you who desired to be rededicated and rededicate your lives to the Lord, please come forward. Even those who desire you have a need in prayer, please come forward because our prayer partners are waiting for you. And we thank you. It has been an honor and a privilege to stand before you this morning. Thank you. Amen, amen. Somebody give Kevin and Monique Green a hand. Amen, amen. What a wonderful thing that we have so many gifts in the house. Amen. So did they show their gifts today? Did they show their gifts today? Let's get them another hand. So as we move toward, through our services at this time, what I want to do is that we want to prepare to give our tithes and offerings. Amen. Amen. So for those who've been doing it, we thank God for each and every one of you that's been given online. How many have been given online and through Realm? Isn't it, all, isn't it easy? So we encourage those to continue to move forward through that, but also for those who are filling out their envelopes, make your checks out to the Spirit Church. And while we do that, I want to ask Katie to come on out as you're writing your checks out and filling out your offering envelopes. Katie's just going to give you a little background information on Haiti. Yeah. Hello, oh, good morning. So, uh, Pastor just wanted me to share with you that I am headed back to Haiti here in a couple weeks. Yeah. I leave on October 26th. Um, I'm headed down there by myself this time, so please everyone be in prayer. Anytime I'm by myself, I definitely need an extra covering. Um, this time I'm going down there because due to the year-to-year -year hurricanes that keep hitting uh, Haiti um, and those countries, of course, with Puerto Rico and everything else, um, they keep getting hit with, you know, mass destruction. And for them, their homes and their uh, living areas, most of them are made out of tin and aluminum or banana leaves. Um, and so they construct their homes, which, of course, are not very sturdy. So they get hit by a storm and it destroys everything they have. Um, unlike us, we you know, still at least have our home. Uh, that being said, um, the kitchen was completely destroyed at the orphanage, which is Kai Refuge, is the orphanage that I work with down in Haiti. And um, their DFS um, kind of system came and said, you guys must build a secure kitchen, one made out of concrete, or we will come and take the children. Um, so, I have been on a mission to raise money to be able to build this kitchen and have the kids have a secure um, kitchen where they can all eat and come together, all 16 of them. So, um, again, I would appreciate your prayers and your thoughts while I am there for um, five days and um, appreciate anything that you guys can do. Thank you so much. So let's, let's pray over our offering. Let's bow our heads and pray over our offering. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for giving us an opportunity to give to you. We thank you, Lord, for each and every person represented here today that are giving. We thank you for those givers that are online. And Father, we ask the extra protection of covering for Katie. And we ask that financial gifts are coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west to support uh, our families in Haiti. And Father, we thank you for our building. We thank you continue to allow us to pay it off uh, debt-free in Jesus' name. So Lord, we just thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. Good morning again, Spirit Church. 
Real quickly, um, before I do the announcements, I do want to share what the Lord did through um, our pastors, Aeneas and Tracy. Um, at the Temple Emmanuel on the hol holiest day of the year, Yom Kippur Day of Atonement, which they did yesterday evening. And this is a testimony from the rabbi that was sent to Pastor Aeneas. It says, Dear Aeneas, OMG, all capitalized exclamation point, you connected with over 1,000 people, standing room only. I'm writing a thank you note now and going to try to get it to Robert to give to you at the game. From a grateful and an inspired congregation, we can never thank you and Tracy enough for lifting us up at the holiest hour of the holiest day of the year. And for what it's worth, at morning prayers this morning, there were far more people than their usual. Your words have already shaped lives. Thank you with love and profound gratitude, Rabbi West. Amen. It's so awesome to see what the Lord is doing through our pastors and also what he's doing through the Spirit Church. Amen. I'm going to go over our announcements for you. Today we have Wide Steps 101, 10 minutes after service, and that will be in room 1270. Men's locker room, where are our men at? All right. <laughs> Men's locker room will be this Monday, October the 2nd, here at the school at 7 p.m. On Tuesday, which uh, is normally our Tuesday night live service, it will be canceled this week. Instead, we will be joining the Bridgeton Police Department for their national night out. It will be held at the Bridgeton Community Center from 6 to 9 p.m. All members are asked to attend. It's on 4301, I believe, Fifi Road. Address is on the screen. Please wear your I Serve shirts or for men, wear your Ro 